Eventide Entertainment presents The Drive-In, hosted by Aaron Lopez. All right, welcome to another episode of The Drive-In. This is a superhero edition as we are looking at the uh, most recent superhero movie, Justice League, uh, directed by Zack Snyder, featuring Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, Ezra Miller, and Jason Momoa. Um, Today we're joined by a friend of mine, Aaron Brewer. Aaron, thanks for coming along today. Hello, glad I could be here. Um, So I told Aaron to kind of be thinking because I want to get everybody on the same page as far as is kind of where he's coming from, at least from superheroes and his appreciation. Um, So what would be, Aaron, what would be your favorite superhero and superhero movie? Um, It's probably a little bit of a toss-up between a couple different options. Um, Superhero teams, definitely the X-Men is probably my favorite. I like the idea of the the outcast aspect of things, which is really cool. Um, In terms of movies, I think um, probably The Dark Knight um, is probably my favorite. I think what Christopher Nolan was able to do with that character and that storyline and and the Joker and everything was really kind of kind of really well done. Yeah, I think that you know it, as far as the that trilogy goes, that was the one that jumps out the most. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your opinion of Dark Knight Rises? Um, I thought it was good. I definitely don't think it was as as strong as as the Dark Knight was, but. I, I thought it had its moments. I love that they kind of brought back, brought Bane back from the the kind of campy nature that it was in in the Batman versus or Batman and Robin movie. Um, I like that they actually made him the the intellectual character that he was. Yeah. I think that's one of the best things about Bane is that he has the physical and the mental capacity. So I was I was glad they brought that back. Yeah, I think that ultimately it was the voice that kind of drew, drew everybody away. Is <laughs> like. You know, the almost the Sean Connery yeah. echoey voice. But um no, I agree. I think that that was probably underappreciated as opposed to uh what everybody else says about it normally. They're like, Oh, it was horrible. Well, it was okay. Yeah. Um uh, so okay. Um so we already gave you guys the kind of the specs on Justice League, but um uh, before we jump into it, we're gonna look at the trailers that we saw from this past week. So for me, when I went and saw it, I went on Thursday night, and uh, I had seven. Uh, It was kind of nice last week. We only had four when we were in Iowa, and it was (laughs) kind of an oddity. Uh, But it was The Greatest Showman, uh, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, Pitch Perfect 3, Black Panther, Ready Player One, Tomb Raider, and one that I hadn't heard of yet called A Quiet Place. Um, Did you have the same rundown? Did you have any different ones? Um, I think I had some similar ones for the most part. Um, There was one... That looked kind of intriguing, um, called Molly's Game. Okay. Um, it was Jessica Chastain. That yeah, I've seen one for that. Seemed pretty interesting. I'm, I'm a fan of a good thriller, so that was that was pretty interesting to see. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I think Ready Player One was definitely one that we saw in there. Um, Did you so. see the one for A Quiet Place? I don't think so. I don't oh, think that was man. the one. Okay, had. so it is basically... And I, don't, I, don't even, I have no idea what it's about, because the trailer itself was purposefully vague. But you you have this family who is uh, completely quiet. Like they have, they step on sand um, in the woods. They're hidden out in the woods. Um, and you have, oh, I can't remember who was all in it. Um, but it, but regardless, the the plot is that they they have to be completely silent. They, the the tagline was saying, if they can't hear you, they can't hunt you. And we never got a, a vision of what was hunting them. We know mm-hmm. it's something large, monster like. But they um, they would speak in. Uh, sign language in the woods they would they play board games but all of the pieces were like felt they got rid of everything else um so it seemed really interesting i'm not sure yeah. i have no one i have nothing to go off of it had a decent decent couple of people yeah. um we'll it sound, sounds really interesting kind of sounds reminiscent of um the village yeah it, it very had, kind of oh let's see here so it had um oh well i didn't even realize so uh john krasinski Oh, is, yeah, yeah. He, he's in it, but he also helped write it and he's directing it. So oh. that's awesome. But mm-hmm. Emily Blunt is also, and then Noah. Oh yeah, I've heard, I've heard about that. I just didn't realize that was what that was. And, and I have no idea yeah. what it's about. I haven't looked at really anything specifically. I think I want to kind of go see it. It doesn't come out until next April, but I want to go see it kind of blind. Right. Um, but then also Noah Jupe, who now he was in, um, uh, Suburbicon. The mm-hmm. one that we went and saw, but then also I saw him as one of the friends in the newer the uh, movie Wonder. 
the oh, one yeah. about the boy. He yeah, yeah. in the trailers I've seen him as one of now this is the third movie that I would have seen him in, so huh. definitely making a name for himself, it seems. Um okay. So of the ones though that you saw, which one are you most excited to see? Um uh, I I'm really kind of leaning towards Molly's game. That okay. that one was just really seemed very intriguing. It gave away enough about about the character and what she was doing without kind of giving away too much of the storyline yeah. left enough to the imagination that I'm I'm definitely intrigued to see some more. Well, that one's based on a true story and mm-hmm. it's always interesting to kind of see the truth behind some of the stories that you may have heard about or ones that you may not have heard anything about right. and then just knowing that it's true. So, I'm pumped for Ready Player 1. I read that yeah. um that was one of the books that I picked up years ago, read it, loved it, heard they were making a movie, and I was mm-hmm. pumped for it. So now I, I'm, I have to reread it because half of the images in there I don't remember. Yeah, so I'm just right. like, oh, okay, right. a couple here and there. But So I'm excited for that one. That'll yeah. be pretty good. Okay, um, so your spoiler-free summary. Um, I have to say that IMDb definitely did not do its job on this one. Um, if we went from the spoiler-free summary from IMDb, you would have no idea that this was a movie that included a team of superheroes. So we will go with Rotten Tomatoes for this one, so thank you, Rotten Tomatoes, for this summary. Fueled by his restored faith in humanity and inspired by Superman's selfless act, Bruce Wayne enlists the help of his newfound ally, Diana Prince, to face an even greater enemy. Together, Batman and Wonder Woman work quickly to find and recruit a team of metahumans to stand against this newly awakened threat— But, despite the formation of this unprecedented League of Heroes, consisting of Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, and The Flash, it may already be too late to save the planet from an assault of catastrophic proportions. Is there anything in there, spoiler-free, that you think we missed? Um, No, I think that's definitely the main thing. Without giving away anything too much of the story, I I think that's the main thing there. Okay, so there you have it. You know, you've got... As always, if you have not yet seen Justice League, you've got plenty of time. It'll be out for quite some time, but if you want to hear our thoughts on it uh, and you do not want any spoilers, this is your chance to pause and come back and listen to the rest of the episode after. All right, so now that we have just those people that, again, I like to say, like to either listen to us talk or who have seen the movie and want to kind of gauge their interest and their level of um, review with ours, here we go. Um, all right, so the movie starts out with this phone kind of interview recording, these two mm-hmm. little kids. And to me, this was kind of a weird, weird way to start this movie off. Um, not because of the concept of the phone, but we just had Spider-Man Homecoming, who did the same thing, mm-hmm. starting from the, the perspective of a youth filming something with the heroes. Right. We jump In a little bit, we'll talk about it, but what were your initial reactions to seeing this, um, just, just in, in general? Yeah, I, I, it seemed a little out of place to me. I mean, I don't feel like it did anything beyond showing that, hey, Henry Cavill's in this movie. Yeah. I I don't know that it really showed much. I think if the conversation maybe had happened a little bit differently, I would have felt differently, but it just felt kind of out of place and random. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of funny. The kids were were asking, like, right. very, very childish questions mm-hmm. and things like that. To me, um, Cavill looked fake. It looked CGI right. to me a little bit. And so it was like, oh, they couldn't get him for the movie, so that's why he hasn't been in anything. And I wasn't sure um, if he would be in the movie or not. I, I could make a hunch that he yeah. would be. but um, So, yeah, I was, I was kind of surprised with that. Um, but then once it picks up and goes outside of the realm of just the kids and the the phone interview, I think it starts to pick up a little bit. We, the movie starts with really the aftermath and the fallout from Superman's death. Um, did you feel this? I mean, I, I could, this could absolutely just be me. The first 10 minutes felt almost political to me. Did you get any hint of that or was I kind of just reaching? Um, no, I definitely think there was elements of it i don't think it was as strong as some of the previous movies have been with with like holly hunter's character in in the previous movies where it was a very politically charged piece of it um i definitely felt there was there was some kind of undertones but i i also liked that it kind of touched base on where all of them were at that point at that point in time Mm -hmm. once it once it went through that and i i'm a music person so i was obsessed with that opening scene just those quiet scenes set to the the everybody knows by Sigrid. Yeah, uh, that version of that song was really really good. So I I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was overly political, but I definitely thought there were some undertones to it. 
the one scene that jumped out to me was when you had the um, the guys who were trashing the store owned by the Muslim family. Oh, absolutely. That would that's why that jumped out to me. And that's I was like, true. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know. It was kind of almost like Superman's gone. So now this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. And I was like, are they are they going Trump here? I wasn't sure if that was kind of the way it yeah. was. Um, if they weren't, it was okay because it still hit upon it. It didn't feel over, like you said, overly right. charged. Um, but there were a couple of those moments where I was like, "That's kind of weird." Um, we we jump into in it after this an introduction of Batman, and the the first twenty five thirty minutes of the movie are really kind of it's kind of jumpy for me. It, it settles in, but each segment is. Um, kind of giving you a little bit of an introduction so we get batman mm-hmm. and we'll talk about him um we get wonder woman and her little story uh we get a little bit of uh flash and his father and then we we get batman going to see aquaman in this mm-hmm. village so we get these jump jumping around points um we'll, we'll talk about each one in detail but um specifically with the batman one how did you feel as far as the scene flowed how did it how was it as far as really the first point of action in the film did it what what do you think did you think it started it off on the right foot i mean i think it it definitely got it rolling i i had some issues with the the kind of pc nature of the character introductions um i i did like that it showed the aftermath with jumping a little bit with with lois lane and and martha kent yeah that was i cool. i liked that it showed what happened with them um but all in all the entire thing felt very piece together at that point rather than a fluid motion for that yeah i mean like I, I liked the whole parademon element um i was excited to see that we were jumping right into it instead right. of like building and so there was some because especially after that first the first piece it was it was slow um as opposed to have you seen thor yet mm-hmm. well thor starts out with a really big action scene like comedy yeah. and action scene that's it starts off on that foot whereas this one started almost like hey you need some background in case you haven't seen these other movies Here's what's going on, and then we'll jump into it. Right. Um, but I liked the the element of fi- getting these parademons right off the bat. Right. Finding out the three boxes were important, and so it was like, mm-hmm. okay, here's where we're going to go. When we jump into the Wonder Woman scene, um, and actually before we do that, because I, I thought this was in the Wonder Woman scene, but I'm, I think I'm wrong. Uh, did you catch the all of our, our, or all of our heroes are dying newspaper that had Superman, Bowie, and Prince? Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I, yeah, it I made me the, sad. That but subtle it was cool. reference there was was nice. So I, yeah, I, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Especially with Bowie and his you know song of Heroes and all that. Right. So yeah. Speaking of music, though, we did jump into Wonder Woman, and I still got all amped up when I heard the undertones of the Wonder Woman theme. Absolutely, that was cool. Yeah, I I think far and away at this point, out of the characters who are involved in this she's she's definitely leading the pack i mean i i have a soft spot for ezra miller i've loved him in pretty much everything he's done but i think she's still a good mix of the strength of that character and really just far and away her movie has been my favorite out of the entire series so far i think well what do you think because i wrote this down looking at it she's the only one that got a true a true um origin story um, yeah. I mean, I think that Batman's origin story, they didn't really give him one. They just kind of said, all right, we're picking up with everything. Right. Just change the actor. Um, and Superman's origin story didn't feel like it was, even though it was. Well, it, it, like, yeah, it felt kind of like a throwaway at the beginning of the f- larger movie. Yeah. It, w- it was the smaller scenes of him as a kid in Man of Steel. Than, yeah. Then it picked up into the action of him already being Superman, I think. And I don't know if it's just me, but it doesn't feel like Man of Steel is part, even though it is, absolutely, yeah. it feels almost pulled away from this universe. It yeah, feels like, oh, we did a super, yeah, we did a Superman movie, and then, oh, this kind of worked. Let's go ahead and do these other movies, mm-hmm. too. Um, so, yeah, I still, I mean, although you could say um, that it was, you know, uh, retconned in as far as connected after the fact, I think that um, the fact that I, that so many people like Wonder Woman the most might just mm-hmm. because... Be because one, they did the the first movie of hers very very well. Absolutely. Uh, but then she had one. Uh, yeah. Flash and Aquaman did not have any any bit of yeah. of backstory at all. Yeah, I th- I think that definitely could play into it. I th- I love seeing how how a hero really comes to being. Um, I I think one kind of issue that I have with this with Justice League as a whole is is the 
the timeline thing. Mm -hmm. Um, each of the characters, rather than being kind of in the same place in their, in their lives, I think it works to bring in newer characters, but in terms of kind of being faithful to the comics and, and having everyone kind of at the same point in their lives, it's very disconnected for me. Yeah. Cause, cause obviously the flash and Aquaman are at very different points in their, in their tenure as heroes than, than yeah. Batman is very, early. very different points. So that was kind of an issue, but I think it works to have kind of a newer generation. It'll be interesting to see how they handle kind of the origin stories and, and everything moving forward. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, we don't necessarily need, we don't need a flash origin story based on, I mean, like you said, the timeline of where he is, the only thing it would be is how he got his power, mm -hmm. but not how he developed into a hero because we just saw it. Like, right. That was him developing into a hero. Right. Um, you know, Aquaman, I think, I, I think that it would be very successful. Um, Jason Momoa is just phenomenal. Absolutely. Um, the writing of it though, to me felt a little too much of like one liners. Anything he said, like, I, I, I it's those very quit, witty yeah. quips. That, like, my man. And, yeah. like, he said things like that, like, all the time. And I was like, okay, we yeah. get it. Like, he's he's hip. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, he he's probably... I, I think he might have been one of my favorite characters, which surprised the hell out of me. Because yeah. Aquaman is such... Had been for so long the joke of the DC mm -hmm. community. Um, so they... They picked the right guy. The one guy you can't make fun of as Aquaman right. is Cal Drogo. Right. You just can't right. screw that up. <laughs> so, I mean, they throw him in there. And, I don't know, I thought that he was really well done. Um, I liked that he kind of just jumped right into the story. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, as needed rather than it being... Um, we didn't we didn't get him without other characters. Right. When we, ha when we had him, it was when uh, Batman, when, when Bruce Wayne went to go find him. Whereas we saw uh, Wonder Woman on her own with her stopping the bank mm -hmm. robbery um, and also being in the uh, in her studio with the, the sculptures yeah. as well as uh, with Flash you know, with his father, Billy C uh, Crudup, by the way, mm -hmm. um, which I was excited to see him because <laughs> um, last time he was he was uh, Dr. Manhattan in mm -hmm. the other in DC. Watchmen. Yeah, in Watchmen. So yeah. I was like, oh, hey, cool. Um but yeah, so Aquaman really just jumps in. You know, we talked about this, the the origins. I think I think we should get an Aquaman storyline. Mm -hmm. um, he felt like a teenager who had all these powers and who knew how to use them, but didn't ever use them for anything other than right. He didn't use them for bad. He used them to help this villain village, and he was he's a loner. Right. So um, okay, so I think the next thing to look at would definitely be this whole Mother Box storyline and Steppenwolf. Mm -hmm. um, this to me visually was one of the cooler moments where we have this this battle that happened where we have the the races of men mm -hmm. the Amazons and oh, the yeah. uh, Atlanteans all joining together to fight Steppenwolf um, and the Parademons. What what surprised me the most, and I probably and I know you would you were excited when you saw this, is that we had Green Lanterns yeah. in this. What did you think? What was going through your mind when you saw that? Um, I I, I thought it was very interesting to see that introduction um i think a lot of times green lantern stories tend to focus on one individual mm -hmm. not really focusing on how long they've been around so this just shows the longevity of those characters i'm really excited for hopefully them to do a better job than they did with the 2011 movie <laughs> yeah um well when, hell, when, they, when they hit the green lantern core movie um Later, I think it's like 2020 is when yeah. it's supposed to come out, so it's still a while away. But well, even, even Ryan Reynolds knew they screwed that one. Oh, up. absolutely. Like he, well, he and, makes fun of it all the time, saying this well, is horrible. Well, there's jabs in it and Deadpool. Oh, yeah. all the time. It's yeah. No, see, so, just don't put me in CGI. Yeah, got no neon green. No, I thought it was really cool though to see that that subtle introduction of the characters without really relegating it to a cameo of a of an actor who's going to be in the future film, just yeah. showing the characters organically in that battle helps i think lend to the whole team aspect of everything yeah. i so. when i saw that a part of me thought and hoped okay oh, we're gonna get a we're gonna get right. a swerve we're gonna get right. a green lantern part of this and we didn't but yeah um but yeah i think it's 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 good to see that the fact that they are acknowledging that this is part mm -hmm. of the, the cinema the universe and now it is in the cinematic universe and it's like right. okay the green lanterns will be around eventually um 
it, it was probably hoping for too much to expect that on top of everybody else. Right. But, um, so the Green Lanterns are there. We have everybody. We find out that Steppenwolf was dis- uh, not destroyed, but he was defeated. Um, mm-hmm. Steppenwolf, to me, what what did you think of the villain? I mean, I I felt a little underwhelmed. Um, I thought the idea was really cool. Yeah. But for me, the stakes didn't seem as high as they have in previous movies. Yeah. I think in in Man of Steel, you have had Zod, who was very, like, it was it was going to be the end of the world. He, like, if Superman didn't stop him, that's yeah. why it raised the stakes, I think, in the, the controversial aspect of the end of that film. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in Batman vs. Superman, you had Lex Luthor, and, and you had Doomsday that it really... And, and even Wonder Woman had Ares at the end of that film that yeah. the stakes just didn't feel as high. I, and I don't know if it was from the aspect that there was really only one main villain against all six of them. Yeah. I, I think it kind of, I don't know, it was a little underwhelming for me. I, I mean, I thought he was an interesting villain. I thought he was pretty cool. And the idea of combining the mother boxes was really cool. But it just didn't feel as important i guess i don't know if that's the right word well but. and I, th- I think some of that stems from the fact that the only place that is truly in danger is a remotely abandoned city in russia right like of course it would go bigger scale and eventually would take yeah. over but there was the only people that were in danger were that we saw was this one random russian family right the only people that had actual mm-hmm. danger uh from steppenwolf being there um, and that, that to me, I think I'd agree that there wasn't a whole lot there. When I first saw him, I laughed. I thought he looked stupid. Yeah. I just was, I didn't, I didn't see any, um, any intimidation. He looked just so fake. Yeah. It grew on me. I think it was initially just that first scene. And then, um, I think once he got to, um, Atlantis is where I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I now was used to the, the way he looked and yeah. kind of with. I don't know the the crown the the helmet and the weird looking I guess beard yeah spikes coming off the side yeah. of his and I think they they tried to emulate the comic appearance of Steppenwolf which is very I mean he's he's a wearing a weird like almost ram's horn helmet that, yeah it's very difficult to translate that into a film version that's gonna look appropriate but yeah I I agree he looked a little. It looked very fake, not very intimidating at that point. But I think once he started actually fighting and, and battling the, the Amazons and the Atlanteans, mm-hmm. I this it got a little bit higher, but then by the end of it, it just didn't feel... I don't know. This, the stakes didn't feel very high for me at that point. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we find out... So we had said the Atlanteans, the Amazons, the Green Lanterns, and the, the all the races of men come together to defeat Steppenwolf... Long, long time ago, they separate the boxes. They give one to each of the groups, mm-hmm. except for the Green Lanterns, um, and they are protecting this these boxes. Not really necessarily knowing what they are, but they mm-hmm. know that combined, they are a power that um, can can doom them all. Um, which then kind of leads us into this first attack of the Amazons um, at Themyscira. Um, what's there's a huge point of contention um, and controversy with the Amazons in this film. Have you heard about this? Yeah. What are your thoughts? So if you guys... Well, first off, if you're not sure, the whole aspect is that in the Wonder Woman movie, the Amazons were dressed in pretty much full clothes. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a full war clothes. Yeah. Full you know, armor. Yeah, armor yeah. and everything. And in this movie, they were wearing essentially armor versions of bikinis. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, stomach showing, very... Um, you know, long legs, not a whole lot of coverage. Um, so a lot of people are pissed off about that. I want to get your insights. What do you think? I, I do think the change was not necessary. I think you definitely could have picked up the existing costume design. I don't know if it was a costume designer for this movie really wanting to make their own mark. Yeah. Um, I will say, I don't think it was overtly referenced in the movie it's it not it wasn't attention. very in your face that yeah here they are in these bikinis and that's all they're wearing um they still were were really badass and were able to to fight um i i absolutely think the change was unnecessarily unnecessary at that point but i don't think it was really as in your face as people were making it seem 
Yeah, and I mean, I think the the, the question for me is the timeline. Um, not that it really matters because they'd been around for thousands and thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the first movie, or sorry, the Wonder Woman movie, where are they at compared to where we see them later? It's maybe what? 75 to yeah. 100 years not a drastic you know, time yeah difference. not in, in their especially in their uh mm-hmm. timeline so i'm thinking okay maybe it's the fact that they're changing with the times i don't know but no it just it felt unnecessary um like you said yeah i, I agree that it uh, not a whole lot of attention was brought to it mm-hmm. um in fact i don't think that there was anything that happened in that battle with stephen wolf where they're trying to get the mother box away from him where I was thinking, oh, that's that's a little that's a little showy. I was like, right. but they, the the editing got you to a point where you couldn't even really notice. Right, I, um, I would agree with that. Yeah, and I thought they still did a really good job, especially with um, Hippolyta of keeping her still very regal and yeah. that while still being a warrior at that point. I thought she was a standout in that scene for me. She did really well in that one. That scene was one of the first really dark scenes of the movie mm-hmm. because there was a lot of sacrifice right. in that. Um, I'm assuming every single Amazon that was in that that bunker with Steppenwolf trying to stop him is now dead. Oh, yeah. Um, as well as, I, I don't know if she was just one of um, the the Queen's right-hand woman like or what, but the, the yeah. one girl who got trapped under the horse mm-hmm. and died... She seemed very concerned about her, but I had no yeah. idea who she was. I, yeah, I was a little confused about that, about whether or not she was a, a character that we had previously met that maybe got recast, or yeah. we just didn't know. I think it was just, it goes back to the the family aspect of yeah. the Amazons, that they all are truly sisters at that point. So it's, one of them falls, it's still, it's concerning yeah. for all of them on an equal level. That's where I ended too. I think that it's, it doesn't matter who it was, if it was random amazon cast a one or if it was a a named character they would have felt the same for everybody um okay so after this um you one we have not yet talked about and i think this kind of speaks volumes to the writing is cyborg Mm -hmm. um i i felt the cyborg storyline was very weak and rushed um i I don't know. What, what yeah. were your thoughts? Yeah. yeah, he definitely didn't get as much attention. Um, I think the fact that his his powers were changing so frequently would have lent itself well to a more of a development. Yeah. Um, he needed an he, origin story. He did. And I think they maybe approached that as like, well, we showed him in the lab in Batman vs. Superman, and we <laughs> yeah. showed kind of his origin at that point. Um, I, I'm hoping once because he's scheduled to have his own movie as well. I'm hoping they delve a little bit deeper into what he's doing, how, how his father really was able to do what he did. Um, yeah, it felt, felt weak, felt like he was very much just in place because they needed someone to pull the mother boxes apart. Yeah. It was a, he was there out of convenience, not necessarily to develop the character. Well, and I think that we need an origin story for him because I think a lot of him is before he even becomes Cyborg. Right. Um, apparently, you, you saw that Wonder Woman and Batman both saw him as being somebody who could help them mm-hmm. before they found out that he was, quote unquote, dead and had become Cyborg. Right. Um, we could really dive into who he was. His He's very smart. He's very right. athletic. You know, so there's, there's the element of that. I think that his father, who... Um, I was I don't know the name of the actor, but I've only seen him in one other thing, um, the sci-fi series Eureka. Did you ever watch that? Mm-mm. He played this sci- okay, again. He plays a scientist, right. uh, but he's a really good actor. So I was excited to see him in this. He didn't get much state or screen time. Yeah. Um, but I I hope that his the cyborg movie gives him something more. Yeah. Just felt like yeah. he, the storyline felt weak. It felt like he was there when the writers couldn't figure out how to get somebody out of a jam Mm -hmm. oh cyborg has all these powers he can he can get us out from underneath the um was it the dam or uh, the reservoir he can uh take the mother boxes apart he's able to do all these different things so it felt it felt unnecessary one aspect of cyborg's storyline that i really did like is when he was spying on uh wonder woman and batman Mm -hmm. in the park and she says later um, when she's talking to the computer, if I wanted to hurt you, I would have done so at the park. Whereas, right. like, oh, that's cool. Cause she didn't show any yeah. reference of knowing. That just shows you the magnitude of her, you know, right. instinct. That was cool. 
Well, yeah, and I, I did enjoy him being able to kind of spy in on them. I liked him hacking into the computer and talking to her while while she was trying to do research and find him. I, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm, I'm interested to see where they go with him. Yeah, and, and here's something, too. is And I'm not as much into DC, the DC realm as I am the Marvel Universe. So I saw a couple people react once they saw Star Labs. Is Star Labs a big thing in the um, DC world? So, most of my knowledge of Star Labs comes from the TV DC universe. Okay. Um, it's very, very present, in, especially in The Flash. Um, the team at Star Labs um, is actually the support team for The Flash rather than Cyborg. Um, it's Star Labs tends to be a... Um, I think it's it's... Science, technology, and research, I think, is what it stands for. Okay. I'm probably going to get crucified by people <laughs> if I'm wrong on that, but it's fine. Um, but it's basically a, a technology and, and science research lab. They do a lot of research on metahumans, on people who have, have powers. Um, so I think it's very interesting to introduce that concept into the film series and see where it goes. Okay. Because um, in, in like the TV series, um, Star Labs and the team there are the ones who actually make... The Flash's suit, whereas obviously in the movie we see that Barry has created the suit himself. He's yeah. really operating as a loner. It'll be very interesting to see how that kind of plays out, how they become involved. That's interesting, yeah, because I that's one of the things that I have never dived into is, and this is on Marvel or DC side as the TV shows, um, outside the Netflix series. So to hear that it has this connection, do you think, well, and here's another question too on top of this, do you think that that the fact that Star Labs did not have knowledge, at least uh, to our knowledge in this movie, of Flash, um, or that he created his own suit, does that prevent us from ever getting the TV series to mesh with the, or the TV universe to mesh with the movie universe? Well, I don't, the TV series, the TV universe won't ever mesh with that because they have their own characters. They have their own Flash. That's very So true. that was, I think, in the initial casting in the movie, it was always a question of why why they didn't make that attempt. And I think just because the TV series has its own mythology, um, at this point, it would have been very difficult to be able to incorporate all that. Um, TV series has its own Flash. It has its own Superman. Um, it, it has all these different characters that are appearing in, in the film series that it would be very difficult, I think, to mesh those together at this point. Okay. Um, so. I am I am curious to see how, because the timeline for The Flash is a little bit weird in the movie, because yeah. um, in in the comic series, he's already working for, for the Central City PD um, and, and already really ingrained in that, in, in that area, in that job field. By the time he gets his powers, it, it's very interesting to see that they kind of flip that on its head mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see where they go with that do you think that we could have a multi-universe connection though because because that was my other yeah. question of it is and that this is the reason why i just can't stand dc in comparison to marvel is that there are so many different universes that it's like if they, right. they just can flip the reset button and say oh no this that's absolutely true there's continuity and there's a connection because yeah. this is just happening in a different universe i don't know yeah it's it's interesting i think it would take a lot to be able to kind of flip it all on its head, but because because like they the TV series recently introduced um, Supergirl into their their area once they acquired that from CBS, yeah. Um, and and the way that they did that to explain the fact that she wasn't present frequently was that she was on another Earth. Um, so I mean, it could be possible. Most of the time, the characters are still the same, whether or not they're their power set or their history has slightly changed. It's still the same actors. It's still the same people. So that would be kind of an, an odd situation to have two different Barry Allens, but it, potentially, I mean, it would be, it would take a lot of work that I guess we'll have to see if that actually happens. We will have to wait and see. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is a, I think this is a good time before we jump into the second half of the movie to take a little break um, so go ahead and refill your popcorn, get some drinks and snacks. Let's all go to the lobby and see what is coming up soon from Eventide. You know, there's nothing quite as satisfying as a good conversation with intelligent company. Join comedian Don Smith every week as he sits down and talks with comedians, actors, filmmakers, writers, and everyday schmoes. It's The Life with Don Smith. Wednesdays at noon on 106.9 FM and now available on the Eventide Entertainment Podcast feed 
every Friday on Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. The weekdays are made for working, but the weekends, those are made for gaming. Join Ellison Smith every Saturday for a new episode of Saltwater Gaming as he breaks down video games of all different genres, consoles, platforms, and eras. Get a bit of the old and a bit of the new, a bit of the action and a bit of the mystery. Get it all every Saturday on Saltwater Gaming, brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. All right, welcome back. So, we just got done talking about uh, the Star Labs connection with Cyborg, and before that, the uh, attack on the Amazons. Um, the next major attack with Steppenwolf hand is, takes place uh, with within Atlantis. I really like the visual aspect of this. I really wish we would have gotten a little bit more Atlantis. Yeah. Um, but what we did have was pretty cool. Um, we saw... Um, and I don't even remember what do you, what is the queen's or not the queen? It would have been his um, sister. Yeah, uh, Mira. Mira. Yeah. Um, she's she's there. She's kind of uh, the major guardian of this mm-hmm. box, at least in this realm. Right. Um, and uh, it, it, we have Aquaman coming back, finding a dead Atlantean, and he comes to kind of mm, attempt to save the day. Mm-hmm. He puts up the biggest fight one on one with Steppenwolf. Yeah. You know, I think that in comparison, it took. An entire core of Amazons to do anything, and they failed pretty yeah. miserably. Um, we had, we had seen, you know, what all these different people that it took um, to bring him down. Aquaman is one who steps up and kind of for a little bit. You think he might actually stop him? Um, it's a short little bit, but he yeah. does stop him for uh, for a moment before um, things kind of fall to shit, and then. Seven Wolf grabs the box and leaves. This, though, is where we have the character development for Aquaman after mm-hmm. this, where he starts to... He is told, hey, you're, you're next in line. You've right. got to go on to the land. You have to go on land, and you need to take care of this because, mm-hmm. um, you know, your mother would have been doing this, right. you know, if, if she was still here. And we do get him stepping on the roof with everybody, surprising to them because they don't think he's coming. Mm-hmm. Um, before we jump away from this, though, let's talk about this. What were your uh, thoughts on this uh, this little mini battle in Atlantis? Um, I I thought it was really cool. I think the the technology that goes into into creating a scene like that is really interesting, and I think it has to be really well done for it to not look fake. Yeah, and I thought it they they pulled it off really well. I liked kind of the tease of Mira ahead of the the Aquaman film, seeing what she's going to end up being capable of because she. She held her own. She did. Against Steppenwolf. I was, she did. I was impressed with with what she was doing, um, and I thought it was good to have that character development between her and Aqu- Aquaman leading into that. Um, I, I did think it was really cool to see that interaction and that battle take place. Um, I did feel it was a little the Aquaman's decision to, okay, well, great, I'm going to go do this after being absent for so long, was a little rushed. Yeah. Um, he he's been gone for all these years and kind of living on his own and one battle and one conversation with Mira and he's ready to go and fight everyone, which, which could again go back to the way that they're developing the character. He's a little bit kind of headstrong and kind of impulsive. I think uh-huh. um, it, it felt a little rushed, but I mean, battle scene was awesome. I thought it worked really well. Um, and I think I'm, I'm very interested to see, how they incorporate other things with the the Aquaman movie moving forward. Yeah, I mean that's that's a good point because they talk about how oh he's finally come back to Atlantis and then it's and I don't even remember specifically if there's a reason why he went back and yeah. It just okay, all right, but now he's going off to to help save the world or at least put his his effort into it, his mm-hmm. hand in that he needs to because of his um his background. So, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, on that, though, the whole air bubble battle element where they would create the... They would dispel the water, and that would kind of either raise or lower whoever they wanted to. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, but I will be very interested to see... That, that tells us how they're going to incorporate dialogue, really, into the Aquaman movie. Right. Um, but then also, too, that gives us a little bit more of um, the split between having them in the water, out of the water, but yet still in the water. Right. Um, and I think that'll be, that was, that was one of those elements that I was pretty, 
pretty excited of. I thought yeah. when there was Nira utilizes this, um, she removes the water from one area and Steppenwolf falls like down to the bottom of the the sea or mm-hmm. wherever it was. Um, that was pretty cool. I, I I appreciated that element. Um, we eventually we get to um we we will we're we're jumping ahead a little bit. We've skipped a couple things, but the major the next major point is where all the Justice League is kind of formed really mm-hmm. um on top of the uh the building in Gotham. Um Barry Allen has decided to join very very quickly, no questions asked. <laughs> is thrilled. Um he needs to make friends, he says. Yeah. Um so he that's, joins That's one thing I'll say about about this iteration of the Flash compared to like the TV universe. The Flash has always been kind of the comic relief character. He's yeah. always been the one with the the quick one-liners and the very like almost awkward yeah person that's one thing i'm really glad i was really excited when they cast ezra miller because i i'm familiar with what he's done and and he was going to bring to that character the tv version's a little bit more straight laced he used to be a little funnier in the earlier seasons but that was one thing with him i was really glad he was immediately yeah i'm in i don't i don't need any convincing and he was really funny yeah he had a lot of moments it was almost like every scene that he was in which is half the movie if not two-thirds of the movie right. he had at least one line yeah. that was a humorous line that kind of break it up or ease tension or, or um, just get things back on track yeah. whatever it may have been the reason he was he did a really good job i think that he was probably one of my one of my favorites because of the fact that he was able to twist each scene um, but they all end up on the roof and um, at this point they are just they are told that they have to go and um they they need to go and, and figure this out. They need to go and, and defeat Steppenwolf. They need to get these mother boxes and prevent th- prevent them um, from being conjoined. Also, a lot of people have been going missing, um, which then leads us to uh, really our first fight with Steppenwolf. Um, at least the first fight of the first Justice League mm-hmm. with Steppenwolf. So they go and they fight him. Um, they fail miserably. Um, there are a couple moments where you actually are thinking that we may lose a member, mm-hmm. um, but this is where Aquaman gem, uh, joins them. So it's kind of it's, it is important because this gets us the uh, the five person uh, league. Um, what were your what were your thoughts on this scene um, with? And I don't even remember what version of the vehicle it was called, but Batman's scorpion yeah, spider. The Nightcrawler. The Nightcrawler. Night yeah, crawler, you know, yeah. I couldn't remember. So the Nightcrawler has a little bit of a play. Um, we have Barry, who kind of gets his moment of just figuring out what it means to be a hero. Right. Um, and we have, essentially we have uh, Wonder Woman making her stand at, or making her case as the strongest figure because she's right. going up against Steppenwolf one-on-one. Right. Um, yeah, no, I like the, I like the development of Wonder Woman really taking on the leadership role in the team up until now. It's definitely felt more of like the Batman show. Um, I, I like seeing her step up and accept that responsibility that it's really her, her battle at this point. Um, loved seeing, seeing the flash step up and, and learn what it's really supposed to be. Cause you, you get that scared little kid aspect, which is very much the point in his life that he's at. Mm-hmm. Like he's like he says in the movie, it's he's been a I'm gonna shove you and I'm gonna run away, yeah. and and that's <laughs> I haven't I haven't battled before. Yeah. You guys have battled, <laughs> yeah. So it was it was good to see him really step in, even if it was just running in and saving people. It it showed he had that capacity to step in and be a hero, and then having Aquaman step up and and really save the team rather than just doing what was best for him. It really yeah. this was the first moment you saw really a cohesive team aspect out of most of them obviously you see cyborg kind of yeah he's like oh, pieces out a little bit mother he's like mother he's, box yeah he's gotta gone. go and he <laughs> just runs away but um yeah so i mean it, it was cool to see really the whole team together for the first time well in one moment too we just got to talking about how flash has his his kind of humorous moments this is the one where he's running around and he trips isn't it yes isn't there any trips yeah. and you see him like in in his fast slow motion of how he's doing everything and he trips and that was pretty funny yeah. um so yeah he we we figure out eventually though that the group of these five is still not enough which mm-hmm. leads us to um a conversation that where you said where wonder woman kind of takes on a leadership 
uh, Bruce Wayne says that she hasn't up to this point mm-hmm. and she needs to. Where have you been? Where were you for the last hundred years right. um, before someone found a picture of your boyfriend? It was like that was the only thing that brought you out. Mm-hmm. So he questions her um, her leadership and that's important because that does come into play later. Um, but then they decide, you know, the the one thing that we need is someone who's who's stronger than... Um, or who, who's who's most important to the human race? Who is mm-hmm. stronger than any of us, l- leading them to Superman? Well, there's a problem. Superman's dead, so they are, are trying to figure out with the uh, the Krypton ship how they can bring him back. There's a lot of worries because the last time this happened, that's how we got Doomsday. Mm-hmm. Um, but they eventually they <laughs> they go grave robbing. It's a weird <laughs> set of. A series of events that lead yeah. us to Superman coming back. Like they say, like you've got Cyborg and Flash who are digging the grave up the grave of Superman, yeah. and which to me, for how big of a person he is, he's just thrown into this grave in the, out of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere. No one's around, uh, but they get the body and they lead it. They, they take it back to this Kryptonian ship, and. Um, they figure out that the only way that they are able to do this is if Flash gets enough charge to mm-hmm. hit it at the same time. Kind of a cool, just visual series there. Um, but ultimately, Superman comes back. First thing that jumped to my mind wasn't, oh, cool, Superman's back. It was zombie Superman. Yeah. I'm like, zombie! <laughs> I Yeah, I kept leaning toward, I, I was like, we're going to get a, oh, it's um, Bizarro. Which is like the, yes, the backwards Superman. I thought Superman. we would. Too. I thought we were going to get a Bizarro situation. I was like, "This is going to be really bad." Because now, not only do you have Steppenwolf, you also have this this zombie Superman yeah. running around. Um, it was part of me that wishes it had gone in that direction. It would have been very interesting to see how they would have approached that. But yeah, yeah, it was it was interesting. I'm well, glad they didn't make him just immediately wake up and was. Was, hey, everything's yeah. all dandy at this point. So. Well, I mean, yeah, the last thing he remembers is him dying. So it's right. he's got a lot of emotions, and he doesn't like everybody, or he doesn't remember. It's kind of like a little right. bit of both. We do have a a moment of with the the fight between Superman and the rest of the uh, the Justice League. To me, that five minute fight, or however long it was, was better than the entire Batman versus Superman fight. Yeah. Like you you see every element of Superman that you should have seen mm-hmm. um in that fight with the exception of a couple little ones, but you have him looking at Flash when he's running, which I thought was really I, really yeah. cool. I I love them playing up the fact that he up until this point before the introduction of the Flash, Superman was the fastest man on earth. Mm-hmm. And and now you have Barry Allen, who previously has been, well, no one can catch me, no one can see me, I can do whatever I want, which which you get with when he's in the jail scene and he he does the Barry Allen does yeah. the marker on the guy's face without him <laughs> noticing, which I thought was another hysterical piece. But you, yeah, you, I like that we see the Flash and Superman being on that same level. Yeah, and it brings in just the terror in Barry's eyes when he realizes someone else is moving as fast as he can. Yeah, and it was cool because it wasn't a, it wasn't immediate. That he saw him, um, that Superman was able to notice that Flash was there. It's very subtle and mm-hmm. it worked its way in. But then also, it wasn't as if as soon as he saw him, he was done. Flash was still able to outmaneuver him a little bit right. to to keep that going. Um, but then you do see um, Superman and Batman kind of going at it for a little bit, where Batman gets his ass kicked. Yeah, like he really just. And then the line of um, "Do you bleed?" Um, yeah, that was that was a nice callback uh, there. That was that was nice. It it really got you amped up. And I for for the first time in three movies, I liked Superman again. Like yeah. I was like, okay, where he's going with all this and leading into this later Russia battle, I think this movie reestablished Superman as a a credible hero who isn't just somebody who's who's so jaded. Like he just he was a good superhero again. Yeah, so. But they, they lose, in this whole fight with Superman, they lose the third mother box, and Steppenwolf now has all of them. Um, they He's been creating, um, or he's he's been basically creating a base in Russia 
um, in one of these old towns where there was a nuclear uh, nuclear reactor went had gone off. So um, we we finally get to this point though where all three mother boxes are together, which to me I thought as soon as they came together that's game over, which right. wasn't close or wasn't far from that, but there's still right. enough of a gap. Um, but he's been building this, and let's talk about this family in Russia because now we are jumping over to this whole Russia right. setting. Did you? I don't. I don't know what their fascination was with this this damn family. Did you feel invested in them at all? I not particularly. I mean, I think it was their attempt to humanize what was going on. I think um, in. In the other films, you've had the human aspect of it. You've seen kind of the bystanders who are being affected by what's going on. Mm-hmm. I think they wanted to play off of kind of the n- nuclear power plant place, um, which really you're not going to have a whole lot of people living around something like that. So I think this was their attempt to interject a human aspect, but without knowing them or seeing anything really major happening to them, I don't know that it really worked. Um, they, they were just kind of there. I, I, it was trying to infuse the human element to it that I just think kind of missed the mark at that point. Yeah. And it, I mean, to me, it probably would have even been better if we saw less of them. Mm-hmm. We'd seen this family, I think in two to three different scenes before we finally get to their, their scene at the end where they're trying to get away and they ultimately are saved. Um, where you had the little girl who brings out the bug spray, which was, Funny, but yeah. necess- I don't know. Yeah. For From what I'm hearing, a lot of scenes were cut from this right. movie. To me, I could have lost every single scene of that family, except for maybe the one at the end where we're like, oh, hey, there's people living here. Right. And maybe added a little bit more Barry or a little bit right. uh, more Aquaman or something that, yeah. or Cyborg, hell, he, like we said earlier. Yeah. So, I almost would have liked to see more of the, I think we, we missed the, the contingency plan that Batman set up with with Lois Lane mm-hmm. um, after the battle where that's true where, yeah yeah after the the battle between Superman and the remaining members of the Justice League Batman had mentioned previously his contingency plan if Superman did wake up and wasn't himself um, and of course that contingency plan was Lois Lane that is going to be the one person who Superman will always be able to reconnect to. I, I personally could have lost some of the Russian family and seen maybe he wasn't 100% together yet and Lois mm-hmm. Lane kind of working with him and getting him back to where he needed to be. I, I really enjoyed seeing the two of them interacting. I think it, it yeah. brings the human element back to Superman again. And then his necessary. his home where she takes him back and then mm-hmm. he's reconnected with Diana Lane and the mother figure. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it was there. It was enough. For me, it was enough. But I think that anything really realistically anything other than this family right really would yeah, have been yeah. just nice to develop we didn't need a character arc for these four random um mm-hmm. you know basically bystanders who we were just trying to ultimately protect at the end um so yeah we do we have lois lane thank you for catching that i had that written down and we skipped it um so we we have this uh th- this battle that is building up they find that they need to get to um, they need to get over to Russia, and they have like three hours, and there's not enough time. And Cyborg says that the plane will go that fast for me, which yeah. I'm like again is another like, oh hey, we wrote ourselves into a problem. Cyborg can fix it. Yeah. Um, but they do get there, and um, they this is to me this was where we saw the cooler parts of the sh- of the entire movie. But the trailers gave away a lot yeah. of this. There were probably half, at least half of the scene mm-hmm. had been in the trailer. Right. Um, what I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Because I have, a, I've had a couple people on who who tell me they go in completely blind for if they know they want to see a movie, they just go in completely blind. They want, mm-hmm. they don't want anything, um, kind of spoiling it for them. Whereas some people say, well, they they kind of still want to know enough to be excited. Right. Um, where do you fall on that? Yeah, I mean, I I definitely saw some of the trailers. I'm I'm in the mindset that I like to know a little bit going in. Obviously, you don't want to know everything that's happening. I do I do understand kind of why the filmmakers and why the the production company released some of the trailers that they did. You have to get people excited to in some aspect to go see the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm glad they tried to reserve some of the Superman pieces. Um, obviously, they did a really 
for the most part, they did a really good job of, of holding back that he was going to be in the film. There was the one line, though, in one of the trailers that wasn't in the movie, but it was Alfred saying, I knew you'd come back. Or I knew we you would, we would see you again, I or knew, took you or, on, yeah. or something. Well, I don't know if it was again, but it was a. I, I remember what you're talking yeah. about. And there was some speculation about what that was going to be. Was it was it Superman coming back? Was it the introduction of a Green Lantern? Yeah. Was it who was that character? So I think that was a good way that they they played it up. Obviously, the the obvious choice is going to be Superman, which I don't think that line was actually in. I don't think it was. I don't think it was in the final movie. So it was interesting that they opted to remove that. Because from that, that gives away some spoiler. Like, you could have taken that out completely. Right. And we would, but again, the, the trailers are not for the people that are going to go and see the movie anyway. The trailers are there for the people who are kind of on the fence. Right. And so I think that, you know, I don't know. I think when it comes to, like, for example, like Star Wars, I've been intrigued enough. I think I have enough going on this next one that I know there's going to be one or two more trailers in right. the next month. I'm going to steer, steer clear. Yeah, that's kind of my thought yeah. as well. <clears throat> so, yeah, but I mean, I think, I thought it was good. The The end battle scene was good. I like seeing all of them kind of go work more as a team. Like like in the, in the not necessarily the sewer battle, but the the previous battle with the Nightcrawler and, and, and Steppenwolf, um, Wonder Woman really tried to take him on alone. And I, it was nice to see Wonder Woman and, and Aquaman working together and really working in sync and fighting with them. That was really, really cool to see. Um, and then and then Superman and the Flash kind of working together to get get the cars and the, the civilians away. That was yeah. really cool. Um, another little little moment of humor as Barry's really proud of himself. He got the the yeah. fa- <laughs> the car with the four families, and <laughs> here comes Superman with an entire apartment building. <laughs> so, and it's funny because even after he sees it, it's like he acknowledges. Oh yeah, he completely just outdid me, but I'm still really proud of the one little right, thing I right. did. So, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Um, I really like to see Superman's ice breath used in in a right. way that wasn't hokey. It was like, right. oh, this slows him down enough for the others to work yeah. their way around well, it. It. Pre- it makes this this previously indestructible weapon something that yes, and and it wasn't. Hey, Superman's going to use his ice breath, and then he's going to do something about it. It was I'm going to use my ice breath, and I'm going to let Diana take control. Yeah, and it was re- that that was a really cool thing to see. Yeah, and I, I will say that I believe that in this final battle, as soon as they go in, as soon as Batman goes in at first, and then ultimately everybody joins him, and then we have this battle with Steppenwolf. I think they did a better job. DC did a better job of utilizing the team element than uh, the Avengers did. Yes, I mean, I think I would agree. That it's this movie felt like everyone was very cohesive and working together towards mm-hmm. the common goal. Whereas, I I felt like in every Avengers movie that we've had, it's the team all goes in as a unit, and then it's Hulk, you go here; Black Widow, you yeah. go here; Hawkeye, you go here, and it's they split. Yeah. Whereas in this one, it's they started with their own separate ideas of the plan before they all converged and all worked together towards the final goal. I yeah. I think the team aspect was really good in this. Well, like the Avengers makes a big deal when they do have the team element. For example, when Thor strikes um, the Captain America shield to make a larger, like they make right. that a huge focal point of the scene. Whereas the final scenes of the of Justice League, the entire scene was the was this teamwork element, and it 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 was impressive. I will have to say that I, I did really like the the final battle. Um, I thought that you incorporate as soon as Superman shows up and they realize, hey, we have a shot at this. They all kick it into another gear. Yeah. Uh, you you kind of see a a callback to this first battle uh, long when they first beat Steppenwolf long ago with the Atlanteans, um, the Amazons, and the, the race of man, where you have Aquaman and Wonder Woman, who are the ones that are directly fighting him mm-hmm. with some help from Superman. Flash is nowhere to be seen. Flash is off doing some other stuff, which he's he's doing things that they need him to do. Right. Um, and then Batman's kind of the same way. He's off. He's trailing everybody out, and mm-hmm. he he ultimately joins eventually. But I I just I thought it was a, it was a fun way of yeah. incorporating everybody um, as a as a team. Yeah. Yeah. I just I think that's a, the best way of saying yeah. it. And I did like they interjected a little humor to to Superman and Cyborg, who have both been kind of the the very straight laced characters when they get the boxes separated finally and S- Superman's joking that he he wishes he were dead yeah. again I think that was really funny you you get some humor out of the two of them which I think was needed at that point because they're both 
Cyborg has come across as a very angry character yeah. for most of the movie at what's going on with him, and you you get a little little chuckle here and there. Well, it's funny because one is essentially dead, and the other is reborn, and so is the. It's kind of like yeah. that that idea. Those that two born. characters are the only ones who really understand what it what it is to die and yeah. come back. Yeah. So. So Seven Wolf is is essentially. I mean, I would assume that he's dead. Um, we do have we have no specific. Uh, proof of this but right. we know that we we could kind of infer um his his parademons are uh they smell his fear after his axe breaks and um so they turn on him because fear is what they they thrive on and he kind of portals back to wherever he's from and they all go with him and his helmet stays behind which kind of kind of infers that he's been eaten by these parademons um I wouldn't be surprised if he makes his way back yeah. again, um, kind of as subservient to Darkseid, who we did get a, a reference. Mm-hmm. They did reference Darkseid once in this. Um, so they're not, they're still going to go that direction, which is good. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Steppenwolf finds his way back. But again, if he doesn't, I also wouldn't, that wouldn't yeah. surprise me. Um, and really, that's kind of the end, essentially. Uh, the They give you a little bit of a, an end montage where everybody is is going back to where they were. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing what they need to do. Uh, Barry's got his his new job, and his dad's really happy, and Wonder Woman is is being the, the face now that, yeah. that Batman she's, had. She's stepped back out to be the hero yeah. again. And so. Batman and Superman are off doing their thing. Super, um, Clark, which this is a major question, is Clark, Clark Kent is dead. Yeah. But now he's back, and so is Superman. Yeah, and he puts on his 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 glasses, or he he well, this is before he goes to do his glasses, puts them on, but then he takes them off and does this like Superman yeah. shirt thing. But what are they gonna do? With, how are you gonna review? How are, how are you, you gonna, gonna show people that Clark Kent's back? And, right. Yeah, it'll be. I'll I'll be interested. Or or are they just gonna do the the old comic book standard of oh he's back and everything's hunky dory? Yeah. It'll be it'll Let's be interesting to see it. how how people address that. Um, all right, so that, that pretty much sums it up. Let's look at the two end credits. Um, the first one being kind of the humorous one, and the second one potentially giving us some, um, mm-hmm. some spoiler, or not spoiler, but teaser into some future films. Yeah. Um, the first one, I really wish they wouldn't, they would have saved this or, or built this in. It was awesome. I think it was really funny. Um, but essentially the challenge between Flash and Superman as to mm-hmm. who is the, who is the better um or the fastest man yeah. on earth um what did you think of the first one um i i enjoyed it i thought it was it was really humorous and that's a good callback i mean that in the comics that that competition has been going on for ever yeah i do like that they didn't reveal anything yep. that's it's never been revealed which one of them is actually the fastest man alive um because it's always come down to well barry allen can stop bullets but Superman's supposed to be faster than a speeding bullet, so which one is it? It's I I liked it. I thought it was a good callback to the comics and kind of that that friendly rivalry between the two of them. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it. After a, a movie that's pretty heavy for the most part, I, I thought it was a good kind of comical way to end. Yeah, everything. well, and I appreciated their callback to the brunch discussion, which I thought was yeah. really funny because <laughs> brunch is you you he, there's the line where he says you hurry to get ready for an early lunch to have to sit for an hour and by that time it's lunch yeah. and so it's like the the whole concept of waiting and everything being so slow yeah and if he loses he has to take everybody barry has to take everyone to brunch and he's like oh that's 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 rough i, that's, I feel betrayed like it's just, <laughs> which i thought was great yeah. um but the second one brings up some questions too because a lot of people had thought that we do get lex luther um luther has escaped from from jail from prison and we see um i love that slade wilson instead of wade wilson which are they're basically the same character <laughs> between yeah. deadpool and uh and deathstroke um but deathstroke comes onto this boat and um i never can pronounce his last name do you know how to it's like joe Man- manganello something Sh- like that yeah he, he's been in a ton of stuff he is yeah the guy the true guy blood from, yeah, and, from true blood and yeah. the, the second magic mike right. and, are you actually was he in both i don't know um, but I know he's been in a couple of those. Like, yeah. so if you saw his face, you're like, oh yeah, okay. Um, I can never pronounce his last name, but he's. He, I'm very excited. I I hadn't been keeping up with things. I'd heard rumors that he was going to come on as Destro, right. and so to actually see him there, I was excited. Yeah. Um, but it looks like we're going to get our Legion of Doom 
because Lex Luthor says, ah, Batman has put together his, uh, has assembled a team. I think we need one too. Or why, about, why don't we make a league of our own? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the question though is that everybody had thought that they were going to recast Lex Luthor because people didn't, I liked it, but apparently yeah. people didn't like Eisenberg as Luthor. So now they've put him in again. That assume that, that's the assumption yeah. I get that they're going with Eisenberg. Yeah. You know, they're going to go forward with him. Um, do you think we're going to get a Legion of Doom, or do you think that was kind of just like a fun uh, teaser? I think at this point it would be. I don't. I don't know how quickly it's going to materialize. I wouldn't be surprised if they hold off any kind of full Legion until the next Justice League movie. Yeah, but. I I don't know that they would tease something like that if there's no intention to to move forward with it. Yeah, I I, I kind of go along the same route. I think that I think that it, it's it comes down to who is going to be their big payoff villain. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Infinity War is Thanos, and I think they have they have stretched that out for years, yeah. so people are ready for it. I think again, this is the same, this is the DC version, but I think Dark Side is going to be that. I think that if we ultimately keep this group together long enough to get there, Dark Side will be the villain that they eventually mm-hmm. have to be. That is the end all. I'm I'm curious to see if that's how they play it out. DC yeah. has not been very good about the slow burn. They want to just jump right on right. what the biggest biggest cash cow that they can grab is. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't sure. be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and introduce a Legion of Doom, and and to show kind of the magnitude of Darkseid. I think if they introduce a Legion of Doom, that they think, oh well, we'll work with Darkseid, and he's like, no, this is my show, and it ends up just shoving them to the side as yeah. a result. I think that would be an interesting, and, and again, pure speculation, I think it'd be an interesting way to show the severity of Darkseid. Like, can you imagine if they, they have a an, ep, an actual Legion of Doom movie, and maybe like Justice League 2 is the Legion of Doom versus Justice League, and then they team up in a third one against Darkseid, if Darkseid says yeah. no to them, like to show just That'd how... That'd be very interesting. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> DC, if you guys need some writers... <laughs> Check us out. We've got some ideas. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, that wraps it up. Um, let's look at, before we, we finish and give our, our final thoughts, um, segment that I always like to do, and I'm very intrigued with this one because there's a lot of options. Who is a character that you wanted to see more of that you didn't get enough of? See, I would say probably The Flash. I think he's... That character has such its its own rich mythology to it that there's a lot more that i felt like they could have done with him yeah um and and i think the fact that he is really early in his his tenure as a superhero i think led to the fact that he was kind of played second fiddle of course you have the the trinity of batman superman and wonder woman Mm -hmm. that are really the core members of the justice league they're always the the constant presence i would have liked to see more of the flash um because I think there's a lot more that he can do, but I think we'll see more of that as his his character develops throughout the universe. Um, and then Cyborg as well. Yeah. I, I think I liked the little piece at the end when it's showing kind of where he's at. He's developing more of his own armor into the more traditional Cyborg look that we're, we're used to. Mm-hmm. Um, really, those two characters are the ones that I would have liked to see a lot more of. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. Those are two for me that I wanted to see more of just because again, we haven't had enough of them yet. They were thrown in without a whole lot of backstory and it felt like we needed more. Um, I wanted to see more Aquaman, but genuine Aquaman, not the my man Aquaman. Yeah. Cause it felt like they were trying very hard to make Aquaman cool again. Um, and there were some scenes where it was really awesome to see him doing his thing. Uh, my favorite scene with him was when he's sitting before they go face step and Wolf, and he's sitting on the lasso of truth and he's telling, he's getting real deep and he's like, I'm really scared. And I just, I've never done something like this before. And I think it all stems it. And he like moves and shifts himself and figures out he was sitting on it. And he comes up to Barry and says, if you ever tell anyone about this, I'll yeah. kill you. Like, that, that is the Aquaman that I think that they were trying to get to ultimately. Yeah. And I just would have liked to seen a little bit more. Um, he was a, he was a badass. I just, I felt that for somebody who, like we said earlier, for a character who's been made fun of so much 
and they even poke fun of it multiple times. Like, do you talk to fish? Like, can yeah. you talk to fish? They, they they embrace the fact that Aquaman is not a fun character or not a really cool superhero. Right. But they turn it on its head and they make him cool again by mm-hmm. one putting Khal Drogo, yeah, uh, Jason Momoa <laughs> in it and in, in that role. But then also just letting him letting him be this cool guy, um, almost kind of like a biker version, um, right. biker surfer dude version of what Aquaman would be. So. Um, yeah. All right. So your final thoughts and then, um, let's, let's rank it on a scale of one to five. Um, let's do, um, I was going to say mother boxes, but that's kind of lame. Um, let's say one to five members of the justice league, even though there's kind of six, we'll say one to five. Um, so in terms of my thoughts, I mean, I thought it was, it was a solid entry. I thought it was stronger than, than Batman versus Superman was, um, really enjoyed the team aspect of things. They, they, they played that up really well. Um, some decent character development for some of the members, not as much for others. Um, I definitely didn't think it, it, it wasn't quite as strong as Wonder Woman, but all in all, I, I, I thought it was a pretty solid solid film i'd I'd give it probably like a three and a half three and a half members of the league so so who's the half member (laughs) probably probably the half would be probably like superman he came in towards the end wasn't in the beginning part of it so (laughs) yeah so probably about probably about three and a half members i'm not far off i gave it a three um and i'm gonna go with the opposite uh grouping i'm gonna go uh flash uh aquaman and cyborg because those were the three that i i enjoyed the most and wanted more of um yeah three out of five for me ultimately i first my first reactions after it were that it was a little boring like ultimately just it was a better storyline it was a i would say this is probably um of all the dc movies of this which i think there are only four um this is number two wonder woman still takes the cake as the best uh well done movie in this Mm -hmm. dc universe uh, but this one was so much better than Batman or Superman. Mm-hmm. Um, it gives us something to go off of. I'm excited to see what they're doing next, yeah. as opposed to saying, like, can we just let this die? Like, can we just move on? Right. No, I, I really am genuinely excited. I feel like there are a lot of questions. Um, Cyborg is being kind of this character that just continued to push a storyline along without any background. There was a lot of missing uh, introductions, which hopefully they will address eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it was good. I think that... Um, even if you're not a huge, um, DC fan, kind of like myself, I mean, I, I, will go and see it, but it's not my, my cup of tea compared to Marvel. I appreciated it. I thought it was well done. I laughed. Um, I was invested in a few of the characters there. Well, like you said, Wonder Woman and Batman had good character arcs. Um, you know, and, and even Flash and, um, Aquaman had their moments too. Mm -hmm. I think that really Cyborg was the only one that really didn't have much of an arc. Um, but I think it was well done. So I'll give it a three out of five. Um, I so I think that's it. Um, uh, thanks for coming on, yeah, Aaron. This was fun. Me. Um, if you guys are listening this week, um, you'll be hearing this episode. This will be coming out on Thanksgiving morning. So, um, happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Have have some some turkey and some pie and enjoy yourselves. Um, stay home. Don't go shopping tonight. Go go be with your families and <laughs> don't. You know, less people out in the stores is the better for everybody. Um, while I am home, though, in Illinois, I will be going and seeing um, either Coco or Darkest Hour. I haven't decided yet. Um, so if you have a preference, let me know. But I'm very excited that my dad will be my guest host on the next episode. Um, I haven't seen my family in a year. So this will be a cool, cool episode. And you guys will get a little bit of insight into why I am the way I am because you'll get to hear my dad. So that'll be a cool one. Um, so that will be coming to you guys from Illinois. Um, as always, if you want to reach out to us, you can on, uh, you can reach us on online through email. Our email address is drive in even tide at gmail.com, or you can reach us on Twitter at drive in even tide. Uh, otherwise that is it from us. Enjoy your holiday weekend. Uh, if you haven't gone out and seen justice league, go, go see it. It's well worth the watch. Until then, drive home safe, everybody.